What's going on, you bunch of heretics? Grab your paint pots, grab your recaf, and let's get some paint on the ever-growing pile of potential. It's here, the heresy is my therapy slap chop tutorials. Today marks a hundred episodes um, of heresy is my therapy starting out with the podcast which i know i was doing in my car and the audio was a bit wild and it was the worst podcast ever but anyway uh, there's a plenty of videos of that but obviously i've been moving into the slap chop tutorials and this is kind of like the 30th tutorial it's the 100th episode and what better way than yes this guy over here grom brindle getting slap chopped whoop Probably should have had this prepped, but yes, 500 episodes or magazines, editions, if you will, of White Dwarf still not even opened. Um, so I figured, you know what? 100 episodes, 500 editions. This seems to be a great combination and giving you guys everything you need to slap chop Grom Brindle, the White Dwarf himself. Yes, this is a longer video, I know that, um, but I really want to give you guys. Um, kind of the, the real how-to to slap chop uh, this model and really make it looking great whilst being quite quick and not having to dedicate hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Uh, I know, a bit of a cheap, but hey, that's what this slap chop channel is all about, giving you guys the cheat code. Anyway, guys, without further ado, as always, everything you need will be in the description below. So yeah, let's um, let's get to it. Well, here he is, Grom Brindle. Um, Grom Brindle, there he is in the flesh. So uh, I'm gonna try and keep him as zoomed in as possible. We're gonna try and make him kind of like the box art as best as possible. But we're gonna, like we've said, we're gonna, we're gonna slap chop him. Really cool model. Uh, and as you can see, I have based him with uh, the Citadel Chaos Black. Uh, yep, so a good primed base. And now we're gonna get on with our slap chop itself. You know the routine, guys? First of all, we're gonna take our administratum gray, and I'm gonna use my uh, Teclon Tiger dry brush from Chronicle, and I'm gonna use the R2 Diamid. Oh, right then, here we go. Brushes prepped, all good to go. I always give it a little, little brush, just to kind of free up of the brushes just in case you may have missed a few bits and that just loosens it off nicely right yes so where were we administratum gray Doo -doo -doo -doo. oh god i've got wires and all sorts i just want to make sure i get it right so as always you are going to want to flip between this one um, and of course our small dry brush as well don't forget i just use kitchen paper you know you've got your um different types of ways to get rid of their paint uh, but for me you know me guys i like to just get it all off with some good old-fashioned uh kitchen paper and again remember our initial layer is going to be with this administratum gray getting absolutely everywhere and i mean getting absolutely everywhere so we've got a nice solid foundation okay nice solid foundation with our dry brush. Paint's all gone. A little bit more. And again, guys, we're more than likely gonna be doing a good few layers of this, okay? So, nice big circles with this initial dry brush, okay? Again, we're gonna try and make it as light as possible. Okay, small circles all over the miniature, getting absolutely everywhere. Okay, going round and round, small circles, and a good few layers. Probably, I reckon two layers of dry brushed administratum grey for this guy. Okay, remember, if we need to, to get into smaller recess areas, all we're going to use is our smaller R1 Roy. Same again. Roy, 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 yeah, that's right. 
okay and same again we're just going to get in absolutely everywhere okay for this initial dry brush okay so getting in absolutely everywhere with this administratum gray all right and it ain't got to be neat you know this but just small circles all over the miniature okay yep so there is our very first layer applied remember after this we're just going to grab ourselves uh, a brush and we're just going to get off all the excess sort of dusty paint that may have come off on that dry brush right so now we're going to apply our next layer you know the routine with this uh, we're going to go with Ultron gray remember we're not needing to go underneath the model at all anymore we're just going down the model where the light touches again we're going to pay special attention to certain parts of the blade on his axe just kind of those like top areas where the light's shining down and when uh, we want to pay a lot of attention to his his white beard uh, with the white dwarf uh, and then of course just run all the cape and all, all of this sort of work down here so yes uh, from the top um, also in grey give it a good old shake uh, and then of course we're just going to get our R2 brush and we're just going to get it on there take it all off as we do give it a quick all off and then as we say small circles over all the tops special attention to his beard again you know where his dice is and again small circles all over the model we're just making sure we're capturing all of those top areas where the light is is oh it's catching okay so all over the tops you know and again remember if you need to get some model like so and then special attention to those top areas all around the top there all right yep that's that next layer done and remember just as we did before we're just going to run a, a a brush over it again you can just use a cheap makeup brush or um, but it needs to be a clean not really used for painting type brush just so you can get off any of the old old dusty paint right next up again we're just going to use our small brush and we're going to get our white scar same again over the tops just nice and gently get the paint on nice and gently just those areas where we really want the light to touch so again again a bit more exaggeration all around his beard and stuff okay just over the tops remember all on the tops that's where the final highlight is really gonna just come into play okay just all those little bits where the light is just catching where that light is just catching finally all right that's where we're gonna go okay Remember, we're not going underneath the model. It's always from where the light is shining. If you feel like it's not bright enough, just you know, give it another little, just another little, little, little layer. You know, remember, it's not neat. This is slap chop, baby. Slap, leech, slap, slap chop. Okay, done skis. Cool. Happy with that. And that's what your um, Grom Brindle should look like now that he's prepared. Two Minutes Heretics, we need to talk about today's video sponsor, Chronicle. As many of you know, I have been using the Teclon Tiger dry brushes for my slap chop and many of the slap chop videos. I love them, I cannot recommend them enough, which is why I've partnered up with Chronicle and they are giving channel viewers 20% off site-wide on all of their products. Just use the code HERESY20 and you will get 20% off all of the everything you buy uh, with Chronicle. Everything you need to know where to find it all is in the description below. So yes, these I definitely recommend for my Snapchat videos 
uh, and hopefully you guys will enjoy them too. Back to the feature video, the, uh, the tutorial, whatever it is I'm doing. <laughs> Right then guys, so we're gonna get our sort of, our silver NMM type thing that we've been doing before. I'm gonna use, I can use both my McCann brush or uh, from the Teclon Tiger range, or I'm gonna use my um, Citadel medium layer. So we're going to apply the Tarragon Turquoise first of all, like a really, really light Tarragon Turquoise. And we're gonna apply it into the sort of, the scale armor work or the, um, yeah, the scaled armor work the axe and we're also going to put it on this axe these spears uh, these blades uh, these blades and this spear here okay uh, we're also going to put it onto his armor work in here uh, and we're also going to put it into his armor work in here there's not much but this will just give us our initial our initial sort of like um nmm you know, if you want to do them silver, do them silver. As you know, grab, grab yourself some silver. But I'm, I'm giving you guys the full sort of way we're doing it, slap chop way, without the use of any um, actual metallics. Okay. So again, we're we'll getting our tarragon turquoise with our uh, with our Lamia medium. I use this all the time, and yet for some reason I still get it wrong. Uh, we're going to mix those up as you can see this is a real thin real thin layer okay and again all we're doing we're just going to get it in those initial areas this needs to be really really light okay you don't want this going on thick otherwise you will lose that kind of um metallic look and i say metallic loosely it's just like a bit of a different way of applying uh, applying it on. Okay. Again, you can use this brush or you can use your um, a, a small brush, whichever works for you. Okay, so like I say, we're just getting it into those areas there. We're then gonna get it into the scales on this side. We're then gonna place it into his armor on the top. Okay, into his arm work on the top. Uh, obviously all of the blades around the base, his axe inside and outside, again really really light, nothing wild, okay really light inside, if it goes over a little bit it's it's not the end of the world, but keep it, keep it as neat as possible, okay, okay yeah on the axe uh, and again all the blades and again, if you want to put a little bit more, you know, you can do. And don't forget this axe here. All right. Okay, so that's that first little bit. Uh, Plunge me into this paint run. As you can see, we've just got this nice and light layer. Um, just in those areas that we want to make uh, like metallic looking. All right. Next, we're going to take Black Templar. Okay, Black Templar. And all we're going to do is feed Black Templar very lightly into this mix, okay? So this is where we're going to need our small dry brush, uh, small dry brush, our small, uh, our small layer brush, okay? Me, I'm going to use my um, McCann Zero. And all we're doing is we're just taking this and now we're going to start to feed it into those lower areas just to try and create a little bit of contrast okay so in the blade we're just at the bottom of the blade just feeding it in and inside just like the artwork we're just kind of just feeding that in there as well again making sure that all the corners and the shadows are covered but again this is really really light amounts you don't want to be going heavy into this <clears throat> in the blades of the, of the weapons again we're just into all the little corners of all the blades just in the little corners again they can be quite grim we want them to be a bit grim right in the scales again we're just very gently just in the tops of the 
in the tops of the scales. Where all the creases are, we're just trying to create that almost like non-oil type effect. Um, and then just a little bit of, of shadow inside, okay? You know, you could be edge highlight like all these if you want to, but uh, here we are at Slap Chop. We're just trying to make life easier for ourselves. A nice model that deserves some attention that we're just trying to make nice. And then same for his arm work on the top. Same again, we're just in there. A little bit of a line in the shadows. Let, let the natural turquoise color and the light sit on the top. Like we did for our normal non-metal metallics, we're just in the creases and a little bit of shadow. That's all. Nothing wild. We're just just dampening down. Oh, I also forgot to say I also did the toe caps as well um, with the um, with the with it as well. So the toe caps have had a little bit of a a uh, a click on as well. A click on a bit of a a topping over with with the. Um, Terry on turquoise, all right. And again, we'll just feed that black Templar nice and lightly into those areas as well. And as you can see, it was just taking just that little bit of the turquoise away and starting to create that, that effect. Well, I hope it is anyway, all right. So just work in there nice and easy, okay. Okay, as you can see, that's now been applied. Um, again, this will stand out a lot more once we've uh, applied the rest of the colors. Next, we're gonna get Black Legion, and we're gonna add it to the mix. Once again, remember what I've said about Black Legion before, this is a very, very dark, dark, and heavy color. So we need to be really, really conservative and thin. Thin this right down, okay? And same again, all we're doing is, with, with this black, is just, right in the corners as you can see use the box to kind of help us out a little bit if we need to we're, we're just in those in those areas nice and dark just in the bottoms in the shadows okay just to kind of create just that little bit of darkness in the model all right Okay, it's just creating that silverish effect. I know it's not the most brightest of one. It's new Angel Jarrell, I know that. But as a simple learning way, just to kind of give your model a little bit of the edge and make it look quite cool. You know what, it's not a bad start, eh? So again, in all those little areas, just in the shadows, just to break up a little bit. And then again, we're just very gently in all the, the creases of the of the scales, we're just adding that black legion in there. Okay, just very gentle, very easy. Same again with the, all the other stuff in here. Just in all the shadows, nothing mental, nothing wild. Just in the shadows to kind of give it that that look. Same for his arm work again in the shadows. Just real small amounts. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. I do apologize if it's not all that clear. But again, our small brush. So I mean with this black legion, keep it light, keep it um, you know, keep it thin, and you can always build on it. Okay. You can always build on it, okay? Always build on it if you want to. And if you don't, then you don't want to. Too easy. Yep, don't forget in his toe caps. Just along the bottom, up in there, on here if we need to. Just triangles in there. Sorry, I'm mumbling away a little bit, guys. I'm just trying. To, I'm trying to do it with you as best as possible, so you're not getting those classic, like you do one little bit and then like the whole model's done. You're like, well, how the hell has he done all that? Oh, it's such a nightmare, isn't it? When you watch those tutorials, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, do that one bit, and then he's like done the whole model. You're like, oh great, brilliant. So I'm just trying to give you the. A little bit of a this is how I'm kind of trying to do it type thing if that makes sense to you all <laughs> so yes as you can see we're just tiniest amounts in those areas and there we are that looks about there all right 
with all that applied, we're now going to get some. Um, we're going to get some white scar. We're going to get our small F1 Jiba dry brush. Again, we're going to place a little bit on the um, on the brush. We're going to take it all off. Taking it all off. Okay, taking it all off. And all we're doing is, just like we do with this Andrew Dust, we're just going to absolutely feather this on. I want you to pay close attention to the, the sort of like tips and the edges, okay, because that will just really extenuate the areas that you've done to create that sort of silverish type look, okay. Same again in here. All those areas that you've done, this needs to be just a very, very light, nothing wild. Okay, nothing more, just like we do with the Zandri Dust Dry Brush. As we've done on all the other tutorial videos, we're just super light with the white, and we just build it if we need to. Okay, we just build on it if we need to. And you'll just see that slowly building up. Okay, slowly building up. Cool. Right then, all done. So next what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to do like all of the rocks. So as you can see with the box, they're kind of like a greenish thing. So I'm going to use Camo Creed for that. So I'm going to get my Camo Creed. Uh, yeah, get my Camo Creed. Pop it over there. And we're just going to do a couple of layers of Camo Creed. Again, two to one with our Lamia Medium. Um, doesn't need to be too thick. But again, a bit of a two to one mix that and all we're going to do we're just going to start to get all the rocks all the rock so all the rocks now don't worry because all oh, these up when we put that when we put that zandri dust on it will really kind of give it a bit of a different look and feel okay as we all know as you've been watching some of these tutorials before so yes yeah, so all your rocks we're just going to lightly go over. I'd probably go two layers of this. Yeah, two layers. Two thin coats. Duncan Rhodes it, as always. I hope he doesn't mind me saying it, but I do give him the shout out. So yeah, Duncan Rhodes it. Two thin coats. All over the model. Uh, as in, Not all over the model, sorry, I shouldn't say that. All over those rocks. Okay, so all over those rocks. Under the big rock. Just being mindful with how you go and that'll be our first bit kind of done right yeah <coughs> sorry about that yep so that's that next bit done as you can see it's all starting to come together already next we're going to do is cloth so we're going to get some talazar talazar blue and same again this needs to be a nice little 50-50 mix talazar blue and lamium medium Okay, mix it up nicely, and I'm probably going to switch back to my um, small brush. And all we're doing is we're just getting in all the areas that are actually blue. Okay, so all of his his capes, uh, not his capes, this cloth work. Okay, the cloth work here, and again we'll start off just nice and thin. We'll probably do again two layers. Nice and easy. Little mistake there, no problems at all. Take that off. Again, so blue in here, blue on this part of the cloth here. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, blue in there. Where else are we blue? Yep, blue trim all around the bottom of there. And I'm pretty sure that's all the blue. So, yeah, again. Two thin layers, nothing wild. It's two thin layers um, of that blue, and you'll start to see it now really starting to come together. But again, we want to make this, this Talisar blue is absolutely lovely. But again, we just need a, a few layers of it to make it really kind of pop, pop. All right. 
Right, with the blue applied, we're now going to get all the red bits involved. So we're going to need our Blood Angels red, our Blood Angels red, and our Flesh Terrors red. So we're going to do uh, this Chaos Helmet, obviously his cape. Um, we're going to do this like squig shield, uh, this um, skeleton shield inside there, uh, this sort of uh, what looks like a dragon, like the, the vampire counts um, wing. That'll be red, red. Yeah, we'll just get loads of it red. So first of all, Blood Angel's red. Again, this is quite a thin, thin paint. So in essence, we can probably go straight from the pot. Um, again, we just thin it out on the on our wet palette, and all we're going to do, like I say, we're going to go just on this bit here, that red in there. And then we'll put the flesh terrors over the top of it. Okay, so there's that bit, Add that bit in there. Uh, like I say, we did the this part of the uh, shield, the flesh. Uh, are they flesh terror? Oh, flesh terrors. Oh, I can't even remember. Vampire counts. The core. I don't. Crimson core. I don't even know anymore. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get that in there. Around here, and then we're gonna get the shield. So again, all of the shield. Make sure we get that. Okay, we'll get that. Get it nice and easy, nice and light. Get it all in because, like I said, we're going to be going over it with the Flesh Terrors red as well. So get that in there. Okay, and then of course you're going to get the cape um, as well, his red cape. Okay, his red cape. And as you can see already, the model is already coming together really, really nicely. All right, so yeah, so cape. Again, two thin coats. We just dunk and roads it so on the outside. Okay, on the outside and then on the inside as well if you can get that in there okay we'll just get it on the inside nothing neat well it was say nothing neat obviously it's a bit of a paint by number sort of system so yeah it has got to be neat ish okay but we're just getting everything where we need it all to go okay then like I say we got our two thin coats of this uh, and then we're gonna apply the flesh terrors red in that afterwards okay yep with all of our red applied as you can see the model is really starting to kind of come together now isn't he he's really starting to come together we're going to get our flesh terrors red next and again this is a bit of a darker mix um, but all we're going to do is we are going to get our oh we are going to get our flesh terrors red as you can see it is a much heavier red much heavier color so we're gonna just add a little bit of Lamia medium in there just to kind of help break it down a little bit uh, and again as we have been before we're just two thin coats really into the shadows but just all over it and the contrast paint will do the work for us that is the beauty of these they just sit in those recesses and they'll just thin where we need them to thin. All right, so all over those areas that you've gone with the Blood Angels Red, we're just gonna now go over it all again with the Flesh Terrors Red, just to kind of give it a little bit more depth. But again, like I say, make sure that you've used your Lamia Medium just to kind of break it down a little bit so it just sits in those areas a little bit neater all right just so it just sits in there a little bit neater okay and again you know two thin coats is you know you probably may even get away with one depending on how thin you've done it um, but again two thin coats is really all you'll is the absolute maximum that you'll need two thin coats all over those areas in red okay right next up it starts we're going to start to look at getting some of the browns um, on the miniature miniature okay so we're talking about is bags this sort of like um, fur work here the gloves 
um, and then we're also just going to put a little bit of the of the brown work into sort of like the the enemy weapon type of stuff we're going to add a little bit into here to kind of give it that rusted effect on all of these not so nice weapons okay and we're going to do the gold and the, NM, the gold nmm kind of like last all right so i'm going to leave that till last okay but otherwise let's get some brown in we're going to go with a good old-fashioned gore grunt affair followed up nicely with the Cy Gore brown and again don't forget we're going to need our medium contrast lamia medium just to kind of help us out a little bit and again like we say all over them all over those areas thin layers two thin coats with that and we are good to go so again we'll just get it all in here again i will do two thin coats of this and if you get it in the shadows onto the cape it doesn't matter too much because it's a nice dark color it will blend in nicely just try and make sure you stay away from his beard um, you don't want to get anything on that, all right? But all this does, um, like I say, it looks like it's quite light, but it will, when we apply this Saigor brown over the top, it just deepens the color nicely. Okay, again, in his side pouches. Um, again, inside the belt, if you, you're getting it inside the belt. Um, that will make sense in a little bit again just in the belt area we want his gloves okay make sure we get his gloves okay gloves both sides obviously that looks like a knuckle duster so maybe we'll leave that one because we're going to maybe maybe add a bit of a, a gold look to that one and then same again for his his other glove and same again we'll just leave that knuckle duster um, we'll leave that knuckle just so we can give him the gold. Right, so with this, all we're going to do, we're just going to place it into that area there, just like it is on the artwork. We're just giving it a bit of a, a dulled brown look. Okay, and we'll do that with all of those. So with those ones, in that shield sword there, up in there again it's a bit messy i know but like you say we'll just it's supposed to be okay it will just create that that effect that we're trying to create on the box art where it's all rusted out and and horrible all right and that's what we want that's what we want and then this skeleton here he can have a little bit of brown on there like that but we'll do some of that, that work properly but again just go over it nothing like wild Two thin coats of those areas, and we're good to go. Right. Right, yep, so with those, um, with that Saigor Brown applied, you know the routine, we're gonna now pop in the, um, did I say Saigor Brown then? I meant Gorgon to Fur, and now we've got the Saigor Brown. Come on, guys, what are we even talking about? Remember, we've spoken about this before. Saigor Brown is a very heavy color, and we'll just pop it back in that mix over here and we will definitely add our lamia medium because by george by george you need it okay like i say longer episode and i mentioned it at the start but i really want to give you guys the kind of secret so where were we yes so all we're going to do like we say this is only probably really going to need one layer um on this Again, but all those areas that we've done brown, we are now just going to go over with the Saigor brown, just to give it that little bit more depth, okay? We're just giving him that extra bit of depth, okay? So, Saigor brown, like I say, if you want to add more to it, you can do. Remember, it's your model, you, you can do whatever you want, okay? But for me, I'm just probably just going to do the one layer of Saigor Brown um, in and amongst those areas that we did uh, with the Gorgon to fur. So on the um, on the fur, on the gloves, as we did before, so into the gloves. Uh, and then all you're gonna do in those bits we put on the weaponry, all you're going to simply do is just kind of round the studs in some of those darker areas, all right, around the sort of bottoms, just to give it a little bit more 
depth. Okay, so in the blades, again, just a little bit of depth in there. Not too much, but just enough to make it kind of pop up, as we said uh, on this video. All right, so gloves, fur, all the bits that we've done brown, you're basically gonna add your gore grunter. No, Saigo Brown, Dan, Saigo Brown. Yeah, Saigo Brown, let's get it in there. Uh, so one thing I did forget to do is um, there's like a tree type thing or like a tree are you kidding me um just with a spear here all I'm gonna do is just get my former mix of former mix of gall grunter fur just in this it's this wood effect okay and then all I'm gonna do as before is just get my cycle brown and just really mix it in there as well. Okay. Easy as that. There. Okay, sorry I missed that bit out guys. I do apologize. So next up, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the light stuff first and we're gonna move to dark. So now we're gonna create our non-metal metallics. This is where we're gonna need, first of all, your skeleton hoard. So we're gonna start to do the gold now. Uh, remember with skeleton hoard, it's a very light color. Um, but what we do need to do is create like a, a base for the yellow to go onto. We don't want to put the yellow straight on this. So we're going to basically go on the axe. Okay, the axe. Don't worry about that gemstone. Okay, with all of the trim on the axe. That's where we're going to go first. Okay, so all the trim on the axe. We're then gonna go um, all these sort of like attachments on his belt. We've then got underneath, we've then got the belt itself, okay? We've then got the sort of um, bracelet parts around his beard, okay? We then have the eightfold shield, okay? So just the, the shield elements on here. What we're also going to do is on the the, the, the axe on the front, we've got a little bit to add in there. Uh, you can go over the skeleton a little bit and then the shield where the skeleton is, um, we are gonna apply it in there as well. We're also gonna add it into the tusks and the teeth, okay, because that will become more apparent. Tusks and the teeth. So um, with the sort of like uh, the jaws of the orc helmet, the bottom part of the helmet is going to have it. The tusks are going to have it as well because it's going to be black uh, and this is all going to be a, a bit of a yellow effect, okay? Again, I would, put, uh, we then got this sort of sword here. Um, say so belt, axe, other side of the axe, knuckle dusters, all need to have it as well. And I would definitely go with two thin coats for this. Okay, guys? This is definitely a too thin coats job. All right, you don't need any more. And it's all we're trying to do is provide a foundation when we start to build the yellow um, into it, okay? And it will make sense in a moment. Um, if you've seen, oh no, I, do you know what? I didn't even do a tutorial for that, so I do apologize. So yes, all we're gonna do, just get these areas done first of all. All right, too thin coats of the skeleton horde. It's a light color, so, you know, we, we can afford to go straight from the pot uh, and build it up from there, okay? Cool. Right then, with that now applied, I'll tell you what, he's coming on nicely, and he's coming on lovely. Right, anyway, that all now applied, we're gonna take our Iron Dan Yellow. Um, again, really good shake up. Uh, so with Iron Dan Yellow, again, we're gonna just pop it into that that little mix that we've had earlier on. And yes, we are going to, um, we are definitely going to just add just a little bit in there of that contrast. Um, I'm in medium, sorry guys. Don't know where my head's at, it's all over the shop. Right, and all we're gonna do is we're just gonna now just go over all those areas that we've just done uh, with the with the skeleton horde okay and we're going to start to create 
the gold effect. Okay, so all the areas that you've just done with the Lamia Medium, you're now gonna go over with Iron Dan Yellow, okay? So the reason why we're doing it is it just gives it, um, if you put it straight, if you put the Iron Dan straight on, it gives like a bit of a weird undertone that doesn't quite feel right. If you're painting yellow on or straight onto black, you, you may have found this in the past. If you're painting yellow straight onto black, it, it just doesn't sit right. And so that kind of ends up, what kind of ends up happening sometimes. So that iron down yellow just kind of gives it a bit of an undertone. It takes away that, um, that feeling which is a bit looking a bit black. All right, um, and just not looking right on the, on the model. Um, you know, go away, give it a try. You, in fact, you may have probably seen it on the old Imperial Fist video that I did ages ago. Um, you'll probably notice it there. The, 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 it, while it's fine, there's just something that's just missing. Um, and again, that was a bit of an older video, but yeah. Anyway, um, sorry guys, I'm chit chatting away. It's supposed to be a tutorial, not a chit chat. Anyway, yeah, so like I say, we're just adding that iron down yellow again. I would probably just go with the with the one left for the time being, and you can just slowly start to see that really come into into its into its own shape there. Um, obviously, we're not doing that on the any sort of the bone work. Um, we're just doing on all the sort of metal work that we that we done. Okay, so just on all the metal work. And like I say, go back to it, pop a bit more on into the mix. Make sure you add that contrast paint in there as well because you just want to make sure this is nice and thin. Okay, nice and thin. And um, you don't want to overdo it with the yellow, okay? If you have to go back and do a second coat, then you have to go back and do a second coat. It's not an issue. It's just better to build it up than it is to go straight into the deep end as we've mentioned a few times before, okay? Right, there we are. Ooh, that's applied there. As you can see, that's all in there, all the bits of yellow, and it's starting to come up really nicely. Um, so all we've got to do left now is just get our Gorgons of Fur in. Again, we can use that old mix that we had earlier on just to kind of top it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, and again, we'll just mix that in nicely. We'll add a little bit of the, adding a little bit of um, contrast in there as well, the, the Lamian medium. So all we're going to do in this is we're just going to start in some of the shadows in the corners we're just going to start to feed in ever so gently, just in some of the corner areas, this Lamian medium, uh, this core, this core grunt of fur. Okay, so just in the shadows, in the corners, you'll have to excuse in the background, it's a uh, little one's bath time. All right, so there we go. I'm going to go in all here, in all around, in the shadows, in the crevices, just underneath, again, nice and light, thin down, nothing wild, okay? Nice and wild, <laughs> nice and wild, nothing wild. Just thin, little bits, just to kind of give it that sort of non-metallic look, okay? <laughs> nothing wild. Right, I'm gonna have to pause it there, guys, and I'll be back in a minute to carry on with this, okay? Right. So next up, we are going to have our, not Gorg Winter Fair, it's going to be our Saigor Brown. And all we're going to do, we're just going to get it into those, add it to that original mix. Now remember what we said all throughout this video, when it comes to Saigor Brown, it's a heavy, heavy mix. It's a heavy paint, so we need to make sure that we thin it down with that contrast medium. Now all this is going to be, this is literally just in the kind of recesses and the corners. If you get it wrong, it's okay, just, just take it off the brush. This is what I mean, it's a real heavy paint. So just in the corners, in the shadows, in the sort of like, the little like, the little nubs. Um, again, in, in here, in the corners, and just move the paint around 
this just needs to be nice and thin really really relaxed okay um, look look on the you know use the the diagram you know the old grim from brindle model to see what where the kind of shade would would fall if you need to um, you know I know it's quite dark but yeah and again like you say on all those other little bits <clears throat> that we've done again same again nice and relaxed nice and just move the paint around move the paint around again on the little bits of teeth just in those little join areas again on the tusk just in the sort of like grooves uh, again like you're saying and in that like you say in the in the gaps here around the nubs in the recesses in the corners just move it around nice and relaxed nice and chilled just like I say in all the grooves in the corners just to kind of darken it up and then same again on this that's what's in here we're just literally like I say in all the in the recesses in the shadows breaking up a little bit creating those lines again you you can kind of be a bit messy with it because like I say when we put the like you say like I say when we put the Zandri dust on in a second uh, or not yet or in a little bit it will just aid it and it will just create that shadow quite nicely that we're after all right so again remember thin the cyborg brown down I'll just come back a little bit thin that cyborg brown right down okay thin it right down and we're just moving it into those areas just to kind of darken it up just a little bit okay that's about right there I think we're about there a bit now skeleton like I said I'm, tr I'm trying to do it so that I'm kind of doing it with you um, so I apologize if this is a bit of a a long video All right, but hopefully you can go back and play these little bits here and there just to see what was been done and where I was going please feel free to do that but, uh, yeah all right but there you go that's a probably about there I reckon so next up all we're gonna do is uh, just the handle uh, and I'm going to use some shyish purple for this shyish purple all right Oof, hang on. shut your window apologies some shyish purple again just pop it on the palette get ourselves some lamia medium and all we're going to do is just feed it in it's that little area there all right nice and easy nice and relaxed nothing wild easy as that guys okay cool beans cool beans so there we have it that's the kind of goldish the sort of like non metal metallic gold on there most bits and pieces now we're just going to add some uh, black elements to the model so for this we're going to use our basilicum grey um, for the black areas that I want to create so again this isn't actually that heavy of a um, brush to, uh, a brush that heavy of a paint to us but we are going to kind of put it on our wet palette and we've got the shield so what we're going to do is all over the shield on the deck okay so the shield the shield and then basically once we've done that we've got the shield that we've done and then we're going to go and do the orc helmet yep that orc helmet he's going to get some back over the shield again we're probably going to do two thin coats uh, and then on his boot itself okay so his actual boot um, not the silver part of his boot but the actual boot that's going to be on there next what we're also going to do is we're going to apply a really 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 thin layer 
again, um, thin layer. Maybe even add a little bit of the contrast medium in there. So the lime medium in there. And all we're gonna do, we're just gonna place it over the beard. Okay, so just in all amongst the beard. And all this is gonna do is just kind of just sit in the recesses rather nicely. Okay, we'll come back to it in a minute. We might even do a little bit of a, a light dry brush with, uh, with that. But again, we're just in the beard with that, uh, with that silicon gray. Again, just getting everywhere that we went over earlier on with that basilicum gray, okay? That's gonna sit rather nicely in there, okay? So basilicum gray applied. So yeah, like I say, two thin coats of the basilicum gray um, on the shield. Uh, some of the handles, sorry, yeah, I meant to say, some of these like handles, again, just place them over that. All grim and dark over the boots. Uh, maybe if you want to, you can maybe add a little bit in some of the metal work if you really want to. But otherwise, we want that shield. The orc helmet, some of the handles, the boots, and just a little bit in the bed. Okay. Okay. Uh, with that all done, we're now going to get our Black Legion. Now, I cannot stress this enough, and I know you've heard me say it before a few times when using this. You don't want to be going straight from the pot onto the model. We're going to add it into our mix of a silicone grey with the contrast medium, and we're just going to thin it out a little bit, roll it off the brush, and then we're going to apply it all over those areas that we've just done with the grey. All right. So allow it just to sit in those areas that we've just done, okay? So the areas you've applied with Basilium Grey, minus the beard, we don't wanna be doing the beard with this. Okay, we're now gonna apply into that. It's better to build this up with a few layers than going straight from the pot and you're just kind of ruining that kind of work that you've just done with it, okay? So again, slowly build this up slowly 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 again two thin coats and then if you want to add more add more but do not go straight from the pot and straight onto this okay that is not what you want to be doing all right guys coolio right guys it's that time of day zandri dust remember what i said we're going to shake this up we're going to get it on our on our brush Okay, plenty on there, plenty on there. And as always guys, we're gonna take the whole lot off. Okay, take it all off. Okay, give you a little flick on there. And remember guys, this is feather, feather dusting. Okay, we're talking feather, feather dusting all over the model. Okay, we'll start with the basin area first. And then we just slowly work our way up the model. Being mindful of the areas we've tried to keep silver. Okay, however, we're just super light, nice and relaxed. There's areas that you want, want it to be a little more, like the skeleton. It's gonna get covered in snow anyway. <laughs> okay, but I'm gonna use this same brush I've got on for literally until I know full well that there's no paint left okay and like you say I'm not pressing hard it's super super light super super soft just minding his hair all on the on the uh, on the axe super light super 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 light okay you know the routine and then we add some more and then we go again, but make sure guys, make sure that this is feathered, feathered touch, okay? Feathered touch, okay? No, no heroes here guys, don't be hitting it really hard, okay? We just, a bit more on, we take absolutely everything off 
test it on your finger if you need to and then just back on the base okay back on the base and we're just super light around everywhere you should slowly just see the change okay you'll slowly see the change but this needs to be as I keep saying before guys super super light gentle gentle touch okay with next to no paint on the brush okay that's how you're gonna create that sort of nulled look nulled look I don't know is it a nulled look oh, I don't even know anymore okay just be mindful of the silver areas you probably get away with it on the axe a little bit okay but just be mindful of those those silver plates Okay, but we're just gonna, like I say, nice and loose, nice and easy. I cannot stress enough how light this needs to be. Okay. Right, so all the dry brush has been applied. Um, all I've done, just as that's been kind of done, I've just kind of re-topped up the beard with a little bit of white scar. Again, that was just a simple case of just, you know, just dry brushing over it. Then what I've also done now, is I've just added some white oh that is not good um, I've just added some white some some white scar dots where all the gems are gonna go and that's gonna make more sense in a moment what we're gonna do now though as a bit of a bit of a cheat code we're gonna take our imperial fist uh, a yellow okay and all we're gonna do we're just gonna place this on our palette Okay, on our palette. And all we're gonna do, all the areas that were that we've got down to being gold, we're just gonna go over those with this yellow. And all that will do is that will just give it a bit more of a vibrant look to it. Okay? Just very gently. A bit more if we need it. And all we're doing, we're just going over those areas just to give that a bit more of a, a yellowy golden shine okay what we're also going to do with that is just all over those areas okay that you want to and if you want to add it into sort of like some of the studs you can do but all we're doing with this is like you say we're just making that gold just pop just ever so slightly more okay nice and easy okay right now with that all done we're going to do the gem and we're going to keep that iron down yellow and all we're going to do is just going to place it in the gems okay so iron down yellow straight into all of these gems okay will make sense in a moment okay the iron down yellow in all of the gems next what we're going to do now we're going to sorry, imperial fist sorry guys uh, next we're going to take iron down yellow this time properly and we're just going to follow the, the way the gem is so we're just going to go from the very top so we're going to go from the top of the gem so hopefully you can, I don't know if you've got to see this. Okay, but from the top of the gem, and all we're gonna do is just three quarters of it. Just three quarters of it. Done. Okay. So we need to do three quarters from top right to bottom left. Okay, top right to bottom left. So all we're gonna do with these gems, with the iron down yellow, top right to bottom left top right to bottom left with the iron down yellow okay top right to bottom left done easy as that next we're going to want our magma droth flame okay magma droth flame there's a few things we're going to do here 
there's not really a few things we can do. And again, we're just going to place that on our wet palette. Take loads of it off. Same again. We're going top right. Top right. A bit more of a curve this time. So more curved round. Again, top right. It's quite a heavy colour this, but it will make sense in a minute. Yep, again, top right. Curved form. Any easier that. This is kind of like a bit of a, a slap chop gem. Next up, Blood Angels Red. And you guessed it, we're just going to add it into that, that mix. Okay, and then all we're going to do, take it off a brush. And you better believe it. Top right. Same again. It's nice and round. Same again on the bottom. It's all round. Kind of doing it with you guys, hopefully you can see it's okay. Alright. And then all we're gonna do, a bit of flesh tear is red. Flesh tear is red. Same again in that mix. And yep, same again. This time we're gonna go in the top. Okay, just right in that top right corner. And we're just gonna just gently round the sides almost surrounding it okay but we're gonna go deep in that top right same again for these deep in the top right deep in the top right deep in the top right and same again for the top here deep in the top right and then we're just gonna just swim it around Deep in the top right, easy as that. All right, and then all we need to do if we want to deepen it again just to make it a bit darker, just in that top right, same again, just little dots in the top right. Okay, easy as that. And um, with that dried, you're going to get your Corax white or your white scar. Okay, just take it, take as much of it off as possible. And all we're gonna do is just a little dot, top right corner, just the tiniest little dot. Oop, little dot, top right, little dot, top right, little dot, top right. Folks, we are almost there. This is time to add some small features to the face. So, okay, we're gonna go with our classic look, guys. The ones that we usually do for most of the, uh, these tutorials. So, Cadian Flesh Tone. Cadian Flesh Tone. All we're going to do is literally in the face. So, nose, cheeks, top of the forehead, on the sides. And if we can, just very gently into his cheek and again we're going to do two thin coats of this nice and easy nice and light okay two thin coats of Cadian flesh tone just mind the eyebrows okay remember we're going to give him the hooded eyes as we usually do we don't need to be a hero with our, with our eyes we're just going simple Tabletop ready. It looks nice in the in the display case. All right. Okay. Next up, we're gonna get our Gilliman Gilliman flesh. Same again as we've done before. Just onto the palette, and then we're just gonna go straight into the face. Okay. So straight on in all the areas that we've just done. Just be mindful of his white beard. Because obviously you don't want to get this 
all over it. Although I suppose we can just go with a bit of a, a bit of the old uh, with a little bit of the white scar should we need to, but uh, hopefully if we're careful, we won't. Yep, so in all the areas that we painted, and as you can see already, that, uh, that just breaks it up ever so nicely. Okay, we'll put a bit more in, especially on the undertones, in the hood of the eyes. Oh, excuse me. There. Happy days. <clears throat> okay, next up, Agrox Earthshade, and again, all we're going to do, just a little bit on the palette. And then just into the eyes. Okay, it's literally as easy as that. We're just literally putting the eyes so into the nose put the eyes okay. give them a slight air of mystery okay you don't want to drown it but again we're just putting the eyes and if you want to just a little bit on his lower lip but in general, we want to have the Agrox Earthshade um, in in the eyes. All right. I'm hoping you guys can maybe see that okay. Okay. Finally, all we're going to do is grab some Kislev Flesh. Uh, you're going to get your Kislev Flesh, and then we're also you're going to need your White Scar. So all you're going to do with your Kislev Flesh is quite literally we're just gonna pop some on the nose on the nose top of his forehead just around the cheeks you can get to them again your small brush your small brush will be more than enough to do this okay Top of the forehead. Okay, top of the forehead. Nose, cheek, cheek, and then where the lip, the bottom lip is. Same again. Just a small, just a little dot. There we go. All right simple as that so next up all we're going to do you're going to want your white scar and all you're going to do with your white scar you literally just again on the brush pop it on and all we're doing with oh way too much okay we're literally just going to over the uh if you need to just over the his white eyebrows. We're just going to re just top those up. Okay. Just top those up just with a bit of white. And if you need to, you know, if there's any other areas that you think, oh, actually, you know, maybe I want to add a bit more you know, here, a bit more there, give them some more frosted tips, perhaps. You know, maybe you've gone a bit overboard with some of these bits so just nice and light where the hairline maybe meets just take that away okay so there is our uh, our Grand Brindle pretty much all done all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get some Abaddon Black and I'm just gonna Abaddon Black around the base and I'm also gonna get some um, Valhalla and Blizzard and just pop a bit of snow in there just because that's what I want to do for, for him for me. So yeah, we'll skip to the part where that's all done. And well then folks, here he is. All done. I mean, I don't know how much like the artwork he is, but you know what? For a slap trap version, 
Well, I think that's all right. Uh, I'd love to know what you guys think to this. Um, as you can see it probably right in there. There we go. Just put in there like that. Hopefully you can see him all right. Whoop. Hopefully you can see him all right. Uh, yeah, there he is. All done. Based uh, with the frost and the snow. I love that. Yeah, I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Um, let me know how you guys have found it. I know it's been a very long video and I do apologise. But I really wanted to kind of show you how I've done each little bit. So um, there you are. Gone Brindle. The White Dwarf. All done. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, leave a little comment, leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe for plenty more videos to come. See you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.